Hi friends, it's Sienna Williston with Our Blooming Catholic Life, and I'm here to talk to you just about a little bit of imagery, lessons, St. Bonaventure, St. Louis de Montfort. Let's, let's jump in and get this all done. So at my profession retreat this weekend, um, Father Stephen King was speaking to us, and he talked about our innermost being. Sorry, this also comes up. <laughs> This also comes a little bit from the video today from Dr. Taylor Marshall on the Sacred Heart of Jesus. It's so many things combined, as well as a Women of Grace interview. So many things combined. So I'll try and get give credit to whomever as best I can, but it's a little tricky here. So on the retreat, we were talking about um, the inmost part of our hearts, our core, our heart, right? The inmost part of us being the heart, the core, right? Um, and that the Franciscans like to say that this needs to be an empty courtyard. And it's one of the reasons why they go with poverty. Because when the things are gone, you don't have responsibility to things. You have to worry about things. Things aren't clouding your mind. Like you go to adoration, you think of these 50,000 things you have to do. Um, if you don't have things, there's, it's a little easier to go to adoration and focus on Jesus. So clearing the courtyard of things. Um, but you'll notice also that most Franciscan courtyards have a fountain in the middle. Why would they have a fountain? And Father shared with us that St. Bonaventure thought of the Trinity as a fountain. And so often the courtyards in the very center will have a fountain. And the fountain starts, you know, God the Father and kind of flows out to God the Son through the Holy Spirit. And it will flow out. It will spill out onto the courtyard, right, and out into the world, bringing life to the whole world. So it starts as is the love of one and it just keeps overflowing to many and it also brings to mind i know there are more resistors in at you um the soul of the apostolate which i mention all the time that you fill yourself up from the well right and it overflows from you um so many people think i'll just go out and do this service and in, in they're so busy trying to do everything in the world thinking they can save the world and that makes them a good christian but you aren't the one who saves the world so um, you go to him, fill up, and it overflows. You go to that sacred heart, right, which was pierced, and the blood and water come pouring out into you and then overflow from you. It's not you doing it. It's I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. And so when on Women of Grace, Jeanette was talking, what was it, on, on June 15th, it was Women of Grace Live, so the radio or YouTube show, and she was talking about the Salesian. So say Francis de Sales thinks of the heart as a cloister. And inside, in, in the middle there, they imagine a chapel. And in the middle of the chapel is an altar. And on that altar is a monstrance. And they sit and worship the Lord in the center of their heart where he is. So in many ways, it's, it's both of these analogies, uh, metaphors, whatever. They, they, they're talking about clearing clearing out a space, clearing out the world and all the distractions, having the Trinity in the center of your life with life giving water, the three in one, which overflows. Um, and you could spend a lifetime just contemplating that. Couldn't you friends? Just a lifetime. Um, but who we are, how do you approach this gift? So there's a gift. There's a gift of a beautiful, peaceful place with a life-giving water overflowing from layer to layer out to you. What do you do when you find it? Do you kind of run up like it's some swimming pool or something? You've seen this um, more in Europe or in Vegas, I guess, <laughs> where there is these big fountains that are open and they're, they're down to the ground level or sunk into the ground. Um, or you think of fountains you may see like this in the mall or somewhere in the world. What do you run and do when you see some sort of water feature? Do you immediately run, you throw pennies in it for wishes? Because it's life-giving. It's going to give you everything you want. You, you're just going to sacrifice a little money? Just a little money even. Just a little. Just I'm going to throw in pennies and I'm going to get everything I want. I'm going to make wishes on, on this life-giving well. Is that how you treat God? Do you go up to him and you just tell him everything that you want? And you're going to get it because it's magic. Um, or do you approach it um, as just some big gay fun thing to go 
play it like are you, you just let your dog wander in take a leak in it you know you let your kids who are dirty just run in it to just cool off and clean themselves off it's kind of like us running up to the eucharist without going to confession or being free of mortal sin do we just run up to the eucharist because you know it's going to clean us so we should just go no matter if we're super dirty or not i think we've all seen pools and and um, places down at the beach where you're supposed to rinse before you get in the water, in or out of the water. Um, quick little rinse before you get that. And that is, that's kind of like confession. You go get a quick little rinse, you go to confession, you get rinsed, then you approach the fountain of life. Have a little respect for it. Because I think, I think if you're not really clean and you go up to get that water, it's it's different for you. It's not life-giving for a long time because it's so busy trying to get off all those layers of dirt. It may never reach your core. It may never reach the, the innermost part of your heart. It's struggling to wash away all that dirt and yuck and overgrowth. Does that water ever get to your heart where it can give it life? Just a thought. It's like a garden completely choked by weeds. You can water it all you want, but you're watering the weeds as much as you are the plants. Is that really what you mean to be doing? Um, yeah, so do we muddy the waters? Do we muddy the waters? Do we put up barriers for it getting to us? I don't know. Be like having a big drink of water, but getting yourself like the longest possible straw to get it. And you're incredibly thirsty, you know, you're dehydrated, and there you are playing with this goofy straw. Do you really do that? If if I am like totally dehydrated, am I going to sit here, sip slightly, or I'm going to rip this lid off and like chug it? What am I going to do? Um, but so we put all these obstacles up. We do that. We put those obstacles up. Um, or or have we taken that little that little brief shower, kind of washed off a little bit, and then gone up to the fountain? And sure, we might still delight in it. We might play in it. We may splash in it. Um, and have fun with it, but but we've prepared ourselves for that experience, right? Get our picture taken with it. <laughs> you know, all the things that people do, because it is, it is the sacred heart of Jesus, the glorious, the Trinity, right? And you want to delight in it. You want to carry that memory with you. You want to be able to think back, like Jeanette says, you know, the heart is a cloister, and you imagine, it could be because she says when she does that, and she is imagining on that altar of monstrance it's usually the monstrance of the church that she was last in and she can only see that because she's gone and seen a monstrance in a church she has prepared herself for that experience so that cloister is clear and she's able to go in and experience the life giving of jesus in the monstrance um and also another thought do sometimes do we approach humbly like yes we've got thousands of things we want to do and all these great charitable works this silly little thing is going to become a little lovey blanket for a baby i still have to attach the little animal on it and i love doing those things but do i just do those things or do i remember to take time to go to mass to adore the lord so it's almost like you're approaching with a little empty water bottle right are you approaching do you have like your little bucket your little spoon, whatever, so that you're going to go and get some water and take it out to other people? Or do you back up your truck, your tanker truck, and just take all the water? Take it all. You're going to, you're going to like fill your pool with it or, you know, water your garden with it. I'm just going to take it all. Or do you approach with, with a bucket knowing that you're going to be able to come back whenever you want and get more? And then you know you're going to be coming back continually with that bucket. And you're probably actually going to bring others to it. Instead of just stealing all the water, right, and <laughs> taking it off, you're, it's better probably to bring other people. If you start putting that water in a tanker truck, and then you're going to distribute it into smaller containers and smaller containers yet, that water's probably getting a little diluted. It's getting a little dirty by the time it gets there. It's not truly the love of Christ. As much as I would love when I approach people that they see Jesus, it's never going to be 100% in this life. The, the best I can get, the most I can try. Hopefully they they see some reflection of Christ in me, right? Um, but it's really not going to happen. So I need to make sure I go and I take this bucket of water and I 
I'm sure that they know this this isn't me this is actually what inspires me to make things like little loveys and stuff for people is my good Catholic grandmother who even though she had a stroke and I think I talked about it before she had a horizontal line that she was blind behind so if she looked at you she would look at you up and down to see you all but she would sit all day um, you know, you can imagine if you can't see below a certain line, walking and stuff is really, really hard. God bless her. I don't know how she did all the things that she did, but one of the great things she did was she would sit and um, it's called hairpin lace and she would make little lap robes, so small blankets to sit on people's laps in nursing homes and hospitals to brighten their day. And she was always making different colors and combinations. If you follow this channel at all, I talked the other day. I think about my grandfather who used to come home with a big old shopping cart whenever there's a sale. He'd come home with a big old shopping cart literally full of yarn. And my grandmother and us grandkids, we'd sit there and sort them out by color until she'd have just the right beautiful, exciting. She could have patriotic ones. She might have school colors. Um, maybe just some lovely colors together. And they might even be gradients, you know, whatever. So all different ones that would bring people joy. And yet she knew that this wasn't her that was doing it. Number one, she didn't do it alone. She built a community. See how she involved my grandfather and all his grandkids in it? And then she'd go out. So one batch would go to a nursing home and the next batch to a hospital. So she was involving other people all the time, pulling them in, building this community. But they all knew it was the love of Christ that inspired her to do it. And it, that was what was outpouring out of her, was the love of Christ into these humble little blankets that she would make for other people so that they could know the love and comfort of Christ. And hopefully that they would turn to him in their time of need. Not turn to her. She's an anonymous person, right? But that they would turn to God. That they would turn to Jesus. Turn to the Trinity in their time of need. She was drawing others. Here's a little bit of this life-giving water. But come, there's more. And that was just the reflection that came to me. If you want to find out more about um, St. Bonaventure and in fact, St. Louis de Montfort, even more about their ideas on the Trinity. I've been trying to track down St. Bonaventure. I'm going to do it more. But EWTN, just randomly when I searched, had an article called Trinity, author of St. Louis de Montfort. And it says, Jesus Living in Mary, the Handbook of the Spirituality of St. Louis de Montfort. I have no idea who wrote this, where it came from. I will say I've been reading it for like the last hour. It's amazing. Um, there's historical problems in approaching the Trinity. There is um, historical background of the spiritual meaning. The Trinity in St. Louis de Montfort. General overview. The Trinity in Montfort as a mystery of love. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Relevance of St. Louis de Montfort's Trinitarian doc doctrine. Insistence on the Trinity. Experience in the Trinity. The missionary dimension. The Marian dimension. And understanding of community. So I haven't even got, I've barely broken the surface here. I've done the, the little section on um, the history. And it, this is mind blowing. I am loving this again. I just found it at EWTN.com. I'm going to try and put the link in the description below as I always do for you friends. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, put anything in the comments below, but absolutely subscribing and liking. Let me and YouTube know that this video is bringing you value and that's how it gets shared more. So we're counting on you. Um, get out there and read these things, friends. They're so amazing. And thank you for sharing and spending your time with me today. God bless you, friends.